Welcome back to the Forensic Detailing Channel, the home of detailing product reviews. <laughs> Subscribe. Okay guys, I've just finished shooting the best glass sealant comparison test, which has been an absolute ton of work. And here's a quick summary of that. Winner, second, joint third, okay? Based on all of this marking, all this criteria that you can go and see in the main video. I'm going to give you the informal lowdown on everything you need to know about glass sealants in this test if you're into your car detailing. It's going to be a dialogue heavy video. There might be a bit of blue in it, so if you're watching it with the family, apologies. Let's get stuck in. Now, the first thing with glass sealants, guys, the, from doing this testing, the thing that springs out in my head is the difference in price. Now, first of all, you have professional grade products and you have perhaps more consumer grade <laughs> consumer focused products if you like where you get higher volume of liquid um, for a much lower cost and a much lower cost per application and if we take these products here for example especially these four these have a sub one pound cost per application little as 20p you know, and moving up, and we've done all that comparison, etc. These two fall into the middle at about two pound, roughly, and about three pound or something. We've done all the data, so in the middle, and then these ones suddenly become high, where you get to five pounds, all the way up. Like they're not in order here, but all the way up to like twelve pound fifty to apply this Ducksback product. You know, because you have to crack that open and then use it, so you only get two in a bottle. So the first thing I wanted to know when I'm doing this test is these glamorous kind of professional grade products, are they really, really, really worth paying that massive increment in cost per application? Because let's say 20p per application, that's 10 times more expensive at roughly two pound per application. So there's already a 10 fold differential. Then when you go up to 12 pound 50 an application, it's like a, what is it? <laughs> The differential in mathematics is huge. Is it like 50 times the price per application? It's a massive. So that's the first thing to always consider when you're looking at these glass sealant products. Um, so we've, we've ranked them there on this cost per application in, and you've given you all the data. Now the second thing is that the industry, and in particular the brands that are selling you these products, will... <sighs> What, what's the word? <laughs> well, perhaps the hook will be that they'll last longer and give you better performance. And the answer to that is, yes, they do last longer. <laughs> they do. And if we go down to our durability testing, Ducksback, G-Technic, Labo, Nanolex, um, Carpro's Void. We'll talk about that later on. But all these professional grade ones have picked up lots of marks. But one of our cheapo ones, <laughs> if you like, managed to, to nudge its way in. M managed to nudge its way in to that durability. So if we look at the amount of wipes they all did, so that's from the lowest wipes before they failed through to the highest. The Angel Wax, which is a very affordable product, is knocking on the door with only, you know, about 10,000 short wipes so it can almost match the performance on our test rig of these professional grade products so there's some real data around durability that is priceless to me as a kind of guy that's into all of this because it puts some data around the reality of this ducks back and g-technic can probably hold their heads high and say our products last a bit longer um, than the consumer grade ones, but the difference between Labo, Carbon, Collective, Nanolex to the, to the Angel Wax one are very small, really. 10,000 wiper blade swipes, which isn't a massive difference. So there's some really interesting data. So we've covered cost. I want to talk a bit about chemical choices and what's in these products. Can, the Megatest article is a much more intelligent um, write-up on all of this than I can produce, because they're more intelligent than me, the swines. 
<laughs> Don't forget to buy it. This is like a draft copy of the test only, but get the proper magazine and support it. So, <sighs> coatings, coatings. So these products here, if they come in little small bottles, you almost think, are they a ceramic-esque coating? What do we mean by a ceramic coating or a ceramic-esque coating? Well, a ceramic coating, they typically contain a speciality resin that we've talked about before, uh, a polysilane, a, poly, a silane resin. That's a hard curing, state changing resin that leaves a hard film and bonds to the surface and lasts longer than other car waxes and sealants. And we know it does, and we know you pay a fortune for ceramic coatings in comparison to buying a pot or paste wax, but they can deliver on their durability. Now, what are these professional grade products? Now, first of all, if they come in a plastic bottle, I'm not 100% sure if they're actually silane based and ceramic coating because they need to be generally airtight in glass bottles and you can get like crystallization of ceramic coatings. So I always look out for a plastic bottle and the Nanolex and the GTEC, uh, uh, sorry, the Nanolex and the CarPro have got these plastic bottles. Um, so maybe they're not proper silo and I don't know on that. So everything in this video is just my opinion, but maybe they're just some stronger concentrated material. Maybe they are, maybe they do contain a bit of silane. Um, now, these three products here, I don't, we'll talk about the ducts back in a second. These three products here, I think, might contain silane or ceramic coating in them, mixed in with other resins, perhaps, you know, non-ceramic resins or organic resins, if you like, to provide various properties like slickness and hydrophobicity. Because if you just took a pure silane resin, you know, the, the pure core ingredient of lots of the Gen 1 ceramic coatings, the hydrophobicity on that material was actually quite low. It has a little bit of hydrophobicity, but not much. Um, so to make these products more effective and repel water, you'd still need to play around with them. So they're not, these, these coatings here, and, and even these products, whatever they are, if they are just coating material, they're mixed in with other resins as well. I'd imagine, that the silane, you you probably wouldn't want too much of it in there because if it's a real high solid silane, you you really see everything through glass. So I'd imagine they're they're lower volume almost, so that they they go on the glass better. That's my opinion. Uh, interesting, interesting. We'll talk. We'll carry on later on. What is in the ducks back product? Well, I don't think this is a coating. I think it predates coatings but whatever it is it lasts a long time but it's not that hydrophobic so it's interesting so there's some there's a little bit on the professional grade stuff and then this consumer grade stuff or whatever you want to call it non-silane products are probably siloxane based and various various forms of siloxane there's millions of siloxane products um, some of them are different I think for example the infinity wax is a cationic one because you can just spray it onto the glass and rinse it off and anything that you can do that with tends to be cationic. The downside is the durability might not be very good. Other, other materials in these products require a vaping out and a cure like the angel wax for example hazes up so it's probably not a cationic um, material in this in here because you need a, need a cure to happen you know what I mean so there's differences between these um yeah so there's a little bit for you on choice of material does it really matter well I think with siloxanes you can definitely get low slickness you know low surface tension as a as a surface characteristic of a siloxane so perhaps the consumer based ones can be a bit more friendly on the wiper blades and the risk of judder, perhaps. Perhaps, who knows? Right, let's carry on. The next thing I wanna talk about is the product instructions. So one thing, we, we had this separation between professional sort of standard products, if you like, and more consumer friendly products. Funny enough, the professional products generally, generally, there's some exceptions to all of this, have much better instructions. And the, 
the award for the best instructions definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, goes to G-Technic. This has the full smorgasbord of instructions which covers all of the prep and all of the, everything you need to do with pictures and diagrams. And if you follow those instructions step by step, you'll get good results with this. So you can write really good instructions. It can be done. And these instructions are so important and they tell you about all the importance of preparation and what polished products you can use and all of that and how to do it properly. And we'll just pick on, we'll pick on Rainex because it is a good product. And then you get really the complete opposite of that where your instructions are open it up, you know, thoroughly clean and dry the surface to be treated. Apply to a cloth and wipe over the glass exterior in a circular motion, allow to dry, removing the excess um, with a dry cloth or by sprinkling water and wipe until clear. So, you know, spread it on, wipe it off. The problem with telling people to do that is you will always hear with detailing, it's all about the prep, it's all about the prep. And <laughs> it is all about the prep because if you go to clean, put this on your glass and your glass has got all horrible white film over it, that's bonded and dried onto the screen. You can't get that off by just cleaning your screen first. You have to give instructions on how to clean your screen first. And that requires sometimes decontamination if you've got lumps of big chunks of stuff on there, but often polishing, using a glass polish that you can get off and then doing a final degrease. So clay bar, polish, degrease, dry, apply. And a lot of these products do not want to go there. They do not want to go there and even talk about it. You know, Stoners doesn't go there. It's just spray on, wipe off. Um, Angel Wax probably does want to go there, but the writing's so small I can't read it. <laughs> I don't think, I think they talk about cleaning with vision and stuff like that. But there was a big variance on the quality of the instructions. Um, yeah, and it's really interesting. And what I find, I think, is that the, the detailing, the new age detailing brands, your G-Technics, your Car Pros, your Nanolex as well, their instructions were very good. They just, they're aware of the importance of prep. This one was an oddball because it's a pre-release product. It's, it's a new technology. It's coating based, I believe. Um, but the instructions, because it's this, the bottle won't look like this. It will look all properly branded up and everything like that. And we just had to go on word of mouth on the instructions. And I don't like doing that, actually, to be honest. Um, uh, Ducks back, were, the instructions could be a lot better as well. So I, we looked at all that, and I made notes on the quality of, the, of all the instructions. And that was all taken into account, what they told you to do and what they didn't tell you to do. Big variance on that. I want to talk a little bit about the packing, packaging, um, and the importance of packaging and stuff like this. First of all, in my opinion, these two products, like with the applicators built in, is the way to go for non-coating based application. So you never really, these, these bottles are just really handy. You never have to go rooting around for a microfiber applicator that some people with normal lives don't have a drawer dedicated to microfiber applicators like I do. They don't, and they might just have one dirty old microfiber in the you know, in the kitchen or something, so spraying it on, spreading it with a dirty old microfiber. So just having these two bottles is really a good way to go. The Rainex have done it with the real cheap lid, you know, they've just stuck a cheap lid on it and you can put it into your microfiber cloth. In fairness, the price is less on this, but there's no frills with this product um, compared to these applicators, which will cost a little bit more money. Um, Stoners, the only ones that really give you a big spray trigger head. And the problem with this Stoners product is it puts out, that spray trigger head puts out way too much product. Um, you can't control it. You know, it breaches up certain pressure and it puffs out the liquid and you get quite a lot of coverage. You've got overspray risk, although you can spray into the applicator if you want. But there's a reason they're the only ones that have used a massive spray trigger head. Um, and I think there's better ways of doing it really. And I think a brand like Stoners, because they're sort of like a glass, they've got an interesting glass, haven't they? That's what they're all about. Could go down the line of a better applicator. Uh, an example of a bad applicator for me is the Infinity Wax. Even though this product puts out the right amount of liquid that actually means you don't overuse it and you use tiny amounts, it's quite good. Unfortunately, it, um, 
can see that bubble coming in, it will drip in a minute. Oh, maybe it won't. Yeah, it gets wet and it runs down the side of the bottle um, when you use it. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe it's better than I thought. I don't know, maybe it's just when you're pumping it, it somehow leaks out. But every time I've used this, all down the side of the bottle gets covered in the material. Um, but it's, it's not as bad as I thought it was, actually. So that's okay. It's probably acceptable, but could just be a little bit better. That's okay. Okay. So that's a little thing on the bottles. These, these, that's a nifty little applicator, you know, credit to them for putting that in there. These ceramic coating bottles, the Carbon Collective one, doesn't have a breather valve on it. So if I can get the top off with one hand. Oh, swine. It doesn't have a breather valve so that when you, don't do this without gloves on, you know what I'm like. So that when you do tip it, it just doesn't want to flow. So you're kind of doing that a little bit. So you get, well, you could argue it gets you save product then, but the G-Technic one's got a flow valve in it, so it just dribbles, flows out of the bottle a lot better. Uh, I just remembered applying it and having to shake it, you know, like give it the thing to get the drops coming out. I found it was a bit of a pain. Um, I think the Nanolex has a flow in it. The Carbon Collective, uh, the Car Pro has, a, you can, can squeeze it, but anyway, uh, that has flow in it as, w as well. So you've got to think about little things like that. I think the Rainex could improve and the Stoners could improve. The Infinity could make that step up, even though they probably want it to be sprayable so they can do the spray and rinse. But it's yeah, just not ideal, that little pump pump thing, but it's okay. Um, appearance. So we wanted to go scientific with the appearance and look, lay the material out on a slide and then get that really cool metering equipment on it. So I, I put them all out on test slides, which isn't ideal, because it's, it's so hard, because you want small amounts on that test slide, and you want to then apply it as close to the manufacturer's instructions as you can to a tiny piece of glass, very fiddly. Um, so that could be, there could be a lot of error introduced through application when you're measuring the appearance. There just could be. Um, so I wanted to talk about that on, on this, although I tried to, you know, install them well you know as best as I could but it was a real pleasure to go down and see the people at row point um, I pinged him an email and said you know have you got any test test equipment for testing glass you know appearance and of course they have they've got metering equipment for everything and they're doing lots of cool stuff so it was really great to go go down there and they gave me some of their time and um, I really appreciate that and it really added to the to the video being able to look at the optical kind of quality or that's not the right word actually because the metering equipment is looking at specific stuff so there i think it was called the iq device and i'll link it in the description big old tube big old thing you know like a you know like a twice the size of a tennis ball container with four balls in it yeah big old cylinder like a giant lightsaber really cool thing it has like a base plate and it looks it doesn't just shine light i think it shines light but also looks at the image it also takes the image and it looks at the contrast you imagine a chessboard it's got a little chessboard plate on it black and white and it looks at the contrast between the black and the white the lines and um, looks for distortion and that's how it gets some of its value so very clever piece of kit and it really added something to the test and the G Technic product performed the best on that and I was surprised because it's probably a heavier material and you put three coats of it down, but it was the best on the kind of uh, sharpness um, reading. And I wonder if that's because you have to use their residue remover. Oh, I was just showing you the residue remover. <laughs> so you have to use the residue remover on the f final sort of application pass. And I wonder if that really clears up the, uh, the glass and gets it really good. Because I didn't do that with any of the others. Because I believe you can only buy smart glass in that little box and you have to follow the instructions. So the, the Nanolex, for example, gives you an alcohol cleaner, but you can buy this as just a product and install it. For, you can buy just this, I believe. Okay, so we're trying to, trying to keep it all fair. Um, 
Yeah, so that's the appearance um, stuff. Ropepoint have got loads of interesting stuff coming and applications of surface quality measurement that are applicable to the detailing and automotive industry that are going to be of real interest and could be massive, like, you know, could be massive. Um, so they'll be, when, they've got some stuff coming in the pipeline. When it comes, hopefully I can get a look at it and show it to you because detailers will be very interested in it. Okay, <clears throat> so we talked about instructions. Prep is so very, very important because in terms of optical quality, if I put a glass polish over this, down a strip, taped it off and polished just a square and took off whatever sealant it was in, the optic optical quality of the area where I've polished and removed the polish will be at its best. Anything else, you're putting a layer of material on there and that material can, can only hamper um, you know, your appearance looking through the glass. It can't improve it. In the, it can, <laughs> but in theory it won't because of the thinness of the film you're putting down, okay? You have a massive chunk of glass and then a tiny thin film. So if that film isn't good, it's going to hamper it. Yes, there's a filling effect, but your visibility generally on glass if it's affected by scratches, they're relatively big if you can see a scratch. So anyway, we won't delve too much into that. But yeah, it's just interesting, the difference going back to what I was saying before about prep and no prep and how some manufacturers get it and factor it in and how they don't towards the consumer end. That's how I've criticized the pro end for the price. You can, can, can criticize the consumer side a little bit more there may be some exceptions there for not really taking the time to tell you about preparation and providing you with preparation products um you know ducks back you could say are guilty of that they talk about it must be clean and clear but there's no as far as i know instructions to polish and clay it comes in a box by the way i haven't got the box anymore with with the instructions on that we looked at so yeah there are exceptions to each rule and instructions could be improved on a lot of these products Next thing, the test rig. So we built this test rig, or Ian and Bert built the test rig. <laughs> but we decided we needed a test rig because if you put them on cars, you get uneven wear on the... So you couldn't lay them all out on the front windscreen because you've got two wiper blades and uneven wear at certain points. So you need to find a car. You couldn't test them on a back, back windscreen of a car because you're not getting the... You know, it's different. It gets hammered at the front. So you'd need a front windscreen with only one wiper blade. You'd ha end up having to um, test them individually, wouldn't you? One at a time. And then when you test them individually, the conditions are never the same. You're never going to get the consistent rain. So we knew straight away we needed to build a test rig. That was a no-brainer. When you build a test rig, you're not ever going to be able to create what's happening here unless you put the test rig on a platform and move go driving around the country while you're doing the test which you ain't going to do what you're doing with a test rig is you're creating an environment to run a test that's as consistent as possible so if you get that consistency there and you put the products through the same test cycle then you get some results and that's what we're doing with the test rig so we're not trying to go too clever the more variables you introduce the more variables can change the more inaccuracy you get so this our test data isn't meant to simulate what you can experience on the roads it's meant to give us a platform to evenly compare them right? some of you get that some of you don't uh, but that's fine so that's a little bit about the durability rig versus real life spider webbing this is an interesting thing when you lay out um glass films on your car in particular siloxane based ones i've noticed this with more more than the coating based ones one of the first ways you can see a failure because you form a film of it over the glass okay you form a nice film of the product and it sits there and that film does its thing when that fi film <laughs> form film starts to fail you start to see a spider web occur and i always think of like a, a glacier a sheet of ice floating on the water as that ice is moving around and getting pulled in different directions it can crack and you start getting little chunks of ice like the old leopard skin that's what happens with these and how quickly you see that cracking and that spider's web 
can be a good indication of how long they're going to last. You will see it potentially quite quickly, maybe within a couple of weeks. The later you see it, the better. The less you see it, the better, in my experience of these products. Um, and you can use that as a good marker of durability, but you can still get that webbing occurring and the product can still hold on for a long time. Those icebergs will stay and you'll see the lines around them get bigger and bigger. Then eventually it starts to fail. <coughs> okay, so that's a little thing on spider's webbing. Hydrophobicity, the guys at Pro Detailers um, put a poll out to all of their communities and uh, asked what was the most important thing. And I think hydrophobicity was what 75% of people, I think, <laughs> if I've got that wrong, apologies, roughly, whatever, that the water, you know, the water repellency was the most important thing with the um, glass sealant and for me it's important it's very important but it's probably not the be all and end all when they're so close it's more how long it lasts and how much it costs and how easy it is to get on there how little of a ball ache is it to apply for me but it must bead okay it must throw that water off because then when you're driving you really notice it when you haven't got the wiper blades on you know you can delay putting the wiper blades on sometimes you don't even need to need to put them on i put this on and i drove down to anglesey uh, and it was pouring and it was brilliant because it was so beady and fresh when i when i applied it i didn't need to use the windscreen wiper blades it was that good um but it doesn't last as long and unfortunately that's its downside it's it's durability so that's a little thing on hydrophobicity. It is important. Next, I want to talk about um, wiper blade judder. Wiper blade judder. So the Angel Wax product won this test. Um, I used this many, many years ago, and it was fine on my M4, but I had wiper blade judder on my Golf. And if I talk about H2Go, someone will reply saying they get wiper blade judder with it. Um, so let me say something. Any of these products, after you go and prep your glass you polish it all down, or do whatever, apply these, even if you don't do full prep, you're making an alteration to the surface of the glass and that material has a different friction level to just bare glass and the effect of water, because when you've got no repellency and you've got that like arc of water there stuck to the glass, that provides a bit of lubrication for the wiper blades. When that goes, really your wiper blade is perhaps making more contact with the glass and then suddenly hitting, collecting up bits of water and then suddenly it can skip and jump, you know, as it goes ahead and does that. So you can never guarantee with these products, any of them, that you're not going to experience some wiper judder. Um, and that's one of the downsides with these materials. If I had to say which one is the best in this field with wiper judder, it'd be the Infinity Wax. And it's just so slick when you buff it and the blades just fly over the glass after you've applied it. So this product is really good on that front. So that would be like a good recommendation if you have a real problem with wiper judder. You might find that's a little bit more hit and miss, but it was fine for me on the M4. So yeah, um, any of these, people have reported wiper judder with the Soft 99 stuff, but again, it's been fine for me. But every single product, people will report wiper judder. I experienced judder with the ducks back not much tiny bit with the g-technic and with the um with the nanolex it could just be random but i did did notice and i put before i'd done that wiper jada test on the application that these have a grippier buff um so that grippy buff see there seems to be a friction there maybe that's causing it maybe that's something to do with the material having the compromise of using a really durable resin or something in higher concentration giving you that durability means that the friction's increased or whatever who knows maybe you can do something maybe you won't get wiper judder maybe you'll put some on the blades or buy new blades you'd be absolutely fine don't know you could really spend a year exploring wiper judder with each of these individual products if you wanted to. Um, so we've only done it on one car. Um, here's an interesting thing, new cars. So when you buy a brand new car and it comes from the, from the manufacturer and assume the dealer doesn't touch it and it goes straight to you and it's had not been washed or anything like that, you'll probably find your glass is hydrophobic because <coughs> it's got something on it. So perhaps when the glass is made, the automotive glass is made, they 
they put something on it as part of that manufacturing process. Let me know if you know, because I'm always interested in learning. Um, but rarely is new glass hydrophilic. So if you spray water over a brand new car glass screen, you usually see it all sheet, you know, it'll push it off. If it's clings to the glass and you get that slow forming film, then you've got nothing on there. Bare glass is hydrophilic. So that begs the question, if you go and buy a brand new car and shout at your dealer not to touch it, don't go near it, don't go near it, don't take that plastic stuff off. You take the plastic stuff off, I want my money back. I want to see the paint underneath before you touch it. It's <laughs> exactly what I'd be like. Um, when you get it and your glass is hydrophobic, perhaps my recommendation for you is maybe the worst thing you could do is install a glass sealant. Why? Because I bet you when it comes brand new and it's hydrophobic, I bet you everything works absolutely perfectly. It's all like mint and it's all brand new and it's got something on there. Leave it. So if you're getting that, that that's my thoughts. I'm interested in your thoughts on that. I don't know if that's 100% right. But if you then go and polish that new glass, you'll remove whatever's on there and then you'll be forever putting these on because you'll want that hydrophobicity. Um, so just get the most out of, if you've got hydrophobic glass, you're there. So get the most out of any factory coatings that may or may not come on the glass from factory. Um, if you're buying a brand new car, I would ask your dealership not to touch it, not to wash it, not to put any material on the car. They're going to look at you weird, but it's just so you can experience the car at its best and make sort of good, good decisions on how best to go forward with looking after it. Um, if you did get your new car and the glass is lovely and all hydrophobic, after perhaps about six months, maybe a year, who knows, you'll see that arc where the windscreen wiper blades go will become like a circle of hydrophilic and the water will cling to it. At that point, you probably can benefit from then polishing it all off, even the bits the wiper blade doesn't touch, and applying a proper you know, glass sealant to your glass and then doing it every now and then. Uh, I think so. I think so. I think you benefit and you, it doesn't cost you a lot of money if you're into your car stuff. That's good. So there's a little thing on new cars. I want to talk very quickly here about the batch issue we experienced with CarPro uh, Flyby Forte. So we're 99.9999999999 sure that we just, unfortunately, the bottle we bought it's probably gone bad for whatever reason. Air's got into there because there should have been more liquid in there and apparently it shouldn't be so orangey. It should be more clear and that's probably all the carrier. So what we probably had is all the carrier escaped and we had a little bit of liquid that was all the raw materials that's probably gone off, doesn't bond and because of that, it just makes a mess of the car windscreen and the product doesn't perform like it should do. That's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for us as testers. It's unfortunate for CarPro, but... Things like that do happen with these chemicals, you know. So it's not the end of the world. It's just we haven't really had a good opportunity to see what this is really like. Um, I'm not sure how CarPro will feel about that, if they'll be, like, disappointed that we had a batch issue. Could we have gone and sourced another one, um, you know, and uh, carried ahead with it? Scheduling. So I had to go up to um, Chippenham, you know, to, to, to stay in a hotel, you know, and then do the testing with Burton E, and we had to schedule that because they've got to be available, I've got to be available, and we just, by the time we discovered the problem, we, it, we, we would have had to delay the whole test and wait, and that wasn't possible, you know, it's just not possible. So that's just an unfortunate reality of doing this testing. Is this a good product? I don't know. Don't know. Um, what do you expect? So that, that's from 2021, so that's... That product is two years old, so it should probably be all right. It's good that they put the, the dates on them. So you can, and the batch. They have batch information on there. No. So how do they know? But they'll probably get it from the date. So really, I don't know how CarPro feel about that, but if I was them, I would just speak to all your distributors, get them to check your bottles, and if you're low on liquid and it's concentrated and orange-looking and not up here and clear, I would um, get those binned and get you know fresh ones out to them that's just the only thing you can do isn't it so that's just i just wanted to cover that batch issue it's unfortunate it does happen every now and then um so the answer on pro or consumer grade guys should you go professional grade or should you go consumer grade <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to give you some thoughts on some of the products. I think this can get near to the, the how long these last. Because no matter, you know, they're more heavier materials perhaps, but they still get degraded by that old rubber blade wiping across it. Maybe the two coats of the Angel Wax really helped it get closer to these, but the G Technic had three coats, that had two coats, that had one, that had one, that had one. Do coats matter? Well, that one won the test and it only had one coat, but they're all different materials as well, so different variables. Um, I'm going to just walk through and tell you what I think about each product and whether or not I would use them or not. I'll start with the G Technic. So it lives up to some of its. You know, I'm not sure it hypes itself or makes any bold claims, but let's just say the whole image of the professional kind of brand with these coating-based kind of products. Well, this, in simple terms, did deliver on its durability, has brilliant instructions, and has really good optical clarity. Does let the wiper blades judder, or did on my M4, the wet wiper blade juddered. Um, but that's probably one of the better ones in this test. Would I use that one personally? Personally, no, because it requires three coats. Three coats. You apply one coat in circles, wait five minutes. Apply another one in horizontal lines, wait five minutes. Apply another one in vertical lines, wait 15 minutes. Forgive me if I'm wrong. And then you do your final residue remover. You've got to do that over the entire car. And then over the entire car... <laughs> For every bit of glass you, in, you install that on, if you wanted to put it on the side glass and rear glass, that's too much. And, you know, the glass, when you 99% of the detailing is done in a day and you're under, the, you're under the cosh to get it done, that's too much of a slowdown factor for me, um, those three coats. That's a real, I mean, if I was installing this as a professional detailer, I would upcharge it because it will take quite a lot of my time to do those three coats um, as well. So I'd upsell that massively you know, like 100 quid for your time to put that on. That's what I would charge through to the customer because it will take you time. The The platinum glass has two coats, um, so you can get this on a little bit quicker, but it's still, we got to do the whole car. It's such a pain, that is. I know you can do other stuff in between as well, so perhaps I'm being a bit of a drama queen. So I'm probably looking more for one coat, really. The Nanolex... You can put one coat down, and it has decent durability for that one coat. But I got wet judder with it. I got wet judder with this one, and it, where the wiper blade comes up and it stops at some point and goes back down, it left lines of product where it's probably scraped it up, and then, boof, and there was like a little white line. Um, so I didn't like that about it. But very good instructions, very good stuff in the kit with it, but just probably not for me. The Labo Cosmetica, one coat product, which is good, did well in the durability. Um, you need to be careful with this with um, high spots. So if you put on too much and let that dry too long, you can get a high spot and it doesn't just easily buff off. So this requires a little bit more consideration when you're applying it. Strong stuff. Another thing with this is you really need to vent out your garage when you're using this because the the chemical inside here, the carriers, the smell of it, it really gave me a headache. It's really, it's not just normal ether that you, you know, you carry a silane in. There's all sorts of other solvents in this and they're quite powerful. So this is a really professional product because if you gave that to Joe Public, they wouldn't even, you know, read the instructions that I haven't got. They would just apply it and, you know, you don't want to be honking that in. The Ducks back, so the Nanolex, is, uh, sorry, the Labo is probably the one, if I was going pro, that I might turn to, because I think it's a proper coating that I can lay down reasonably quickly, but I'd just vent the hell out of it anywhere I'm working. The problem with this D Ducks back thing is it lasts, the applicators are really nifty, but you only get two applicators, and it's really expensive per application, even a lot more than these, so like this, the the labo the labo this is my detail my detail the labo oh jesus it's the only one i didn't write the bloody cost per application down up it's in the main video it's about a fiver i think 40 quid because you don't use a lot of it you just drop it down um 
so you can still get a cost per application that's reasonable, but the cost per application of this will always be twelve pound fifty because it's twenty five quid for the box, and you can only, you only get two of these. Once you crack it open, you can't put a lid back on it. Whatever liquids in there will go off. Okay, so the cost of that's so high, and it doesn't have the allure of all these ceramic coatings. So it's it's a product that's been around for a long time, and it's done a job, and it lasts really well. But I think they could modernise a bit um, ducks back. I think they need to modernise, get it out of that box with the picture of the duck on it, get some really good instructions, maybe give four of these away in your, in your box. And also, if you could make these applicators but load them up with a water-based polish so you can crack them open, then prep the polish first, then put this on, that would be really helpful because that, that prep for the professional trade, they'd want to do that because if you had a messy glass, you have to do that prep. So I think Ducks Back have got a good foundation, but they need to, you know, they need to move and can improve the product, I think. So I wouldn't use, I don't think, any of these. There's a possibility I might use that. But for a guy at home just wanting to put stuff on my cars, I'm much more drawn to just where you get a good amount and this bottle can sit in your garage for a few years and it will still work. And you've got so much liquid, you're going to struggle to use all that. So, so then I'm sort, sort of like trying to separate these. Okay. Now there's a little, there's a significant chunk in price extra for these two. And for that money, you really basically get a very good applicator. Very good applicator. You could, it's so good I'd keep it once this is run out. Someone said you could just take the felt bit off and put it in the washing machine and it's clean and put it back in. That's quite a good idea. Um, but there's a big jump up, about £2.50 per application or whatever, and £3 something per application of these two. And these are all, you know, sub £1. 20p per application. So that's 20 times more expensive to apply that than this one. <sighs> Is it going to be 20 times better? No. Might it be marginally better? Perhaps in certain areas. But really... Really, in simple layman's terms, these four here are the ones that have a very sensible cost per application. 20p, I think Rainex is about 35p, that's about 50 odd p per application. And this is 80p because you put two coats down. If you don't put two coats down, it's only 40p and it sort of jumps down to here. You don't need to put two coats down. It doesn't say you have to, but it just says for best performance or something like that. Words to that effect. Everything's my opinion. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> and I've always used one layer of this, and it's been fine with one layer. So you could apply that, apply that sentiment to those products that I was criticising about layers earlier on as well. You could probably just pr provide one layer. Um, so really, it was forgetting all of this scoring stuff the kind of one that I was looking to recommend would have ideally been in these four because of the cost savings to you the viewer um, even over these two you you might not think it's significant but 10 times the cost from a review review perspective per application is significant uh, and it was really a case of which one of these then is the best um, well I can say that stoners is my least favorite of these four it's a bit more patchy on application still past the dry judder and and uh, wet judder which is great still affordable did well on some of the optical stuff but when i applied it i could see a little bit of that patchiness and the trigger puts too much product out so you could spray into an applicator perhaps and uh, spread and tweak your application with that but th that's my least favorite of those four cheaper ones the rainex is a good Steady Eddie, <laughs> quote from The Apprentice. It's a steady Eddie. Like it's, you'd think this product, because everyone's heard of it, and it's like the one that's in all the hardware stores, and you go and buy, you thought you think it might be rubbish, but it's not. It's pretty beady. It's very cheap, and it goes on nice. It really does. It goes on a bit nicer, in my opinion, than the stoners. It's a bit easier to buff out as well. Um, good Decent product, but it's Achilles heel is that the durability was down with the stoners as well. It wasn't too much in there. They're not quite as good as some of these detailing ones in terms of durability. So I would rule the Rainex out in this little field we've got going here. The Infinity Wax, absolute superb product. Like I did the ease of application 
stuff on my M4 in this garage before I went down to uh, Burt's. And like I'm applying it, I'm just thinking, wow, this stuff's really good. It's the only one that when you buff it, you know when you buff something on glass, you can see that white haze and you're going around chasing it out and then you might see a little bit and you're trying to buff on that and that. That was the, by far the most streak-free one to buff. Like There was no chasing of any residues. It was just spread it, wipe over the glass. It was like, oh, Jesus. And then I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's easy to apply, but it's going to be rubbish. <laughs> it's always that way. If it's easy to work with, it's going to be rubbish. But it wasn't. It was like, after I'd applied it, it was really, really beady. It buffs really smooth as well, and it's really good for the wiper blades. It's just really good. So I was like, that was my little stealth underdog. And it was the cheapest in terms of cost per application by quite a long way. So I had high hopes for this. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have the durability. And you will be applying it. So to give you some real life stuff around that, I put it on my car, as I said in the main video, I think, before I went up to Anglesey. Drive up to Anglesey, rain, wiper blades on. The whole day at Anglesey, around the track, pouring down, wiper blades on. You know, and this product was working great and beading, um, but already after two or three days, I could start to see the cracking, the spider's webbing that I talked about earlier on. Very small ones, and now they'll get bigger and more noticeable, and it's losing a bit of its hydrophobicity because it's had 12, well, probably more than 12 hours. That's just a journey there and back, and then, then the day. So it's probably had, you know, in excess of 10, somewhere between 10 and 20 hours of wiper blades going, and rain going, and me hammering it round. <laughs> Got done for speeding on the way up there. <laughs> 57 in a 50 zone. Mudder. Just must have pushed the boundary of what I could get away with. 57 in a 50 zone. Um, so yeah, it really doesn't have the durability. But other than that, it's a really great product. And once you have applied it, you know, you can do your full prep with the polish. Once you have applied it, you can just spray some more on the glass. Like... You've washed your car, just puff a couple of squirts on it and blast it off with your pressure washer and it will top up because it's cationic. So it's quite, this is probably the, the most user-friendly, retail-y, easy one to apply. And it's just so good on the, on the um, residue front. Really, really brilliant. Like, it says on there somewhere streak-free and it really is like compared to the others that are a bit more streaky. Even this one, the host to go, H2 go, goes misty and you've got to buff it out and chase out a little bit of that residue, much more so than you do with the Infinity Wax. But you get something back in return for that, that it lasts a bit longer. So there you go. I think the Angel Wax is the, I don't know if standout performer is the right term, but the durability test was critical and this consumer-based affordable product kept up with these ones virtually it was on it on their coattails and i think that and the fact it's very very beady and uh, didn't cause me any judo means it's probably the worthy winner so there we go um what else to talk about that is the final thing the only other thing i think perhaps to talk about is with the soft 99 um i think this product here, the Glaco Ultra, would have done really well in this test. <laughs> like, probably would have won. Because I think it, it definitely has more durability than the Soft 99 the, than the DX one. This claims four months. This claims 12 months. That lasts about four months. <laughs> Near as damn it on your car, depending on how much you use it. That's roughly what you're going to get. That, I know, in real world, does... I had it on my... E36 M328, uh, and it was still going after nine months, and I scrubbed it off to do a comparison between the two. So polished that all off, and then put this down on one side, and that down on the other. So that one really lasts, um, and it's a really good product. But you can only have one in the test. We are soft 99, and I think they wanted to have that in there. Ideally, they'd have had both, but they can't have both, because it's not fair. You've got twice as many products in, so we've got to keep it fair. You've got twice the chance of winning, really, haven't you? So we, we me and Bert and uh, Ian had talked about all the test criteria in advance, picked the product line, and, and we can't really do that. It's a shame, though, because I think that could have been a worthy winner. Um, 
it would have been even more expensive, I think, than these two, or somewhere in the middle, I don't know. More expensive than these ones, but it might have had the performance, which could have perhaps even beaten that, and maybe even gone further than these. And it's uh, fluoropolymer, isn't it? And that, that, be, that might be part of the reason that moving forward, these fluoropolymers, you know, they're like forever chemicals, aren't they? And they're trying to phase them out. And this is a different soft technology. So maybe this is the sort of chemical that we're allowed to use going forward. And maybe this chemical isn't. And it's something that's going to, you know, get phased out over, over the next 20, 30 years. Who knows? But that's a cracking product, that one. Maybe I'll... Um, Maybe I'll do a 50-50 like some, or some sort of test. Maybe we can get that on the test rig with Pro Detailers and that on the other side. Who knows? <coughs> My throat is killing me. Um, what glass polish did we use to prep all these panels? We used 3D glass, which is really good um, glass polish. Nice and easy to remove. Water-soluble. Um, so we could prep very rapidly. And it's a neutral product so that... It just gave us a good way of giving us a baseline every time because we have to remove the residues of previous products. We can't just clean and put over the top. Even if it says in the manufacturer's instructions, clean your glass and put this on top. If we know we've got the old product underneath and we put that on there, we're going to get totally different results. So we had to bare bone. We talked about, me and Bert and Ian talked about that. We had to bare bone and then follow the manufacturer's instructions, but always bare bone or else you just get completely invalid results. Um, so there you go. That is probably everything you need to know about glass sealants. And if anyone's still made it this far, you are a true detailing aficionado because this sort of video is not for the wider YouTube audience. The wider YouTube audience has a retention span of about three seconds. And if it doesn't involve a bouncing pair of hands, um, they lose interest. So the guys that have made it to the end, thank you very much. The final thing I'll ask you to do is subscribe to the channel if you haven't, because that's very important for me. And also buy the latest volume <coughs> of Pro Detailers magazine, because the write-up on this is fantastic. There's more analytical stuff, more graphs, a very good overall. Um, I'll just flash it up so you can see it very rapidly. See that? I'm not going to I'm not going to zoom in because you tight asses will screenshot it and print it off. Um, showing like graphs of the footprints of all the things we've measured, so you can the bigger the, the span, like the better it is, and it shows you. It's a real good summary of of all of the products. They've done lots, lots of clever analysis. So go and buy the latest volume of the magazine available in the description. Other than that, take care. It's uh, Saturday. I think Festival of Speed is cancelled because it's blowing a gale but I don't think it's that bad but if there's any chance they've probably done the right thing it's not that bad I mean it's literally up the road from me so I don't know but it's early isn't it there could be heavy wind forecast later on but it just seems like a bit average windy day to me but there you go when you've got all that tent and equipment stuff out there and you're in doubt and you never know then if there's safety issues then they've definitely done the right thing I was lucky enough to go down there on uh, Thursday, a fantastic event, and it's a shame they've had to cancel today, but um, tomorrow will be a great day for anyone going. So, Cool stuff. Don't forget to subscribe. Adios.